as much as I love things like JRPGs and platformers and awesome action games and stuff like that, one of the genres that ties me most closely to video games is actually racing games. When I started in the industry, the game that got me in the door, the one that I put the most time in in my entire career, was the NASCAR series from EA Sports. What's going on everybody? I'm Jay, welcome to Square Pegs, and today, as you can probably imagine, because you're so beautiful and intelligent, we are talking about racing games, but specifically, arcade racing action. And I'm gonna give you what I feel are my favorite arcade racing games from each console generation, and we are kicking things off on the Atari 2600. When it comes to arcade racing action, for me, it all starts with pole position on the Atari 2600, and it all starts with my cousin Greg. I have told the story in the past about how the first time I ever played a video game was at his house playing Atari football, and he absolutely dusted me. But that wasn't the only game I ever played with him. One of the other ones I also played with him was pole position. And I absolutely fell in love with it, and it's something that, to this day, is a game I go back to and still enjoy, despite how completely simple it is. Now, this might be stretching the definition of what an arcade racing game is, but, I mean, hell, pole position was in the arcade, so I'm rolling with it. It's just the home console version of it. It's basically a drag race. You're behind your car, you're driving down the road, and that's it. There's the game. Avoid the other cars, don't crash, have a good time, and enjoy the incredibly simple but unbelievably addictive gameplay. There's a lot of stuff in the Atari 2600 I don't get the appeal of. It was the generation before I really started playing games, but pole position, I get. I dig this game, I love it, it's super fun, and it paved the way for so many incredible racing game experiences down the line. Generation 3 takes us to the NES, and we are talking today about my introduction to Rare RC Pro-Am. RC Pro-Am was in the regular rotation for being rented from the Apothecary in Westport, Massachusetts. This game was everything that I wanted a racing game to be. It was over the top, it was fast, it was fun, it was the first time I'd ever seen weapons and special items included with a racing game to make it more over the top and more exciting. And the best part was, you used these tiny little cars, you were racing around these huge tracks and just having a blast. The thing that really gets me about this one, because I was never an RC guy growing up, and I'm not going to say it's incredibly realistic and it's accurate to the actual hobby of RC car racing, I'll leave that for Gary from Rock Solid to discuss, but for me, there's an arcade here in town that actually has a dirt track outside of it for RC cars, and watching them race and seeing how they go, it really felt like the guys at Rare really nailed it with RC Pro-Am. Is it one-to-one? -one? No, I'm pretty sure there aren't actually any rocket add-ons for RC cars to use on your actually like, you know, vehicles that you race with, but I do think that the kind of idea behind it and the track layout and like the hairpin turns and the things like that, they really nailed it. This is a fantastic game. If you've never played this one, you owe it to yourself to do so. Play both this and the second one. They're both fantastic. Generation 4, uh, I might be cheating a little bit here, but we are going to the arcades and something that I used to pump tons of quarters into at the Super Walmart in Cape Coral, Florida. This is Ivan Iron Man Stewart's Super Off-Road. There's no shortage of incredible racing games. I could have gone with Biker Mice from Mars. I could have gone with Rock and Roll Racing. But the more I thought about it, I kept coming back to Ivan Iron Man Stewart's Super Off-Road. And it didn't matter where I played this game. I loved it in the arcades. I loved it on the Super Nintendo. I loved it on the Genesis. I loved it on the NES. It's just one of those games that spoke to me. And the way it spoke to me first, despite the fact that I would play it anywhere I had the opportunity, where I really loved it was in the arcade. Having that free spinning wheel so you could just slam yourself around hairpin turns and through chicanes, and watching your truck with this great kind of sense of scope and scale and impact as you're going over these mud ditches and over these like rumble strips and things like that, watching it animate, it really felt like you were there, and I loved it, and I still love it to this day. If I see it in an arcade, I'm playing it because I think it's that good of a game. Generation 4 is 100% Ivan Iron Man Stewart's Super Off-Road. No joke, this is probably my all-time favorite racing game in an arcade setting. Alright, here's one that I'm a recent convert on, and this is a game that I 
did a video on last month and I'm actually having a lot of good experience with it now. It's something that I have really, really enjoyed. On the N64, this is Diddy Kong Racing. <laughs> Hallelujah, he can be taught. Generation 5 brings us to Diddy Kong Racing. And those who watched the channel last month, and if you haven't, you should really subscribe. I mean, come on, you're hanging out. We're friends now, you should stick around for a minute. But if you watched last month's So I Played Blank for the first time, I played Diddy Kong Racing really for the first time, and I ran into a hell of a bug that really, really impacted me. I couldn't do anything but drive, I couldn't fly. And that's been solved. I can, I can do everything now, I can drive, I can fly, I can use the hovercraft, everything's great. And Diddy Kong Racing is absolutely fantastic. Everything in this game works. The character selection is great. The course designs are fun. The racing is challenging the further into the game you get. And the different vehicles all have their own unique gameplay style and sense of speed. Like everything feels different and unique and challenging. And that's really, really, really hard to do. But Rare nailed it. Surprise, surprise, right? This is the second entry from Rare on this list after RC Pro-Am. And I love it. This is just such a good game. Thank you everyone for your suggestions on what to check out and trying different things to see if I could come up with a solution to fix the problem. It did just end up being a corrupted save file. Something was screwy there, I deleted it, everything's good to go now, and I'm having an absolute blast playing Diddy Kong Racing. All right, hopping now to Generation 6 onto one of my all-time favorite consoles and featuring one of my favorite games. Loved this on the Dreamcast, loved this in the arcades. This is Crazy Taxi. Much as I love Super Off-Road, this game right here, Crazy Taxi, is right up there as far as arcade experiences go. I used to go to Rocky's Replay in Orlando, Florida and play Crazy Taxi constantly. I used to dump quarters after quarters into this game because it was so good. Well, tokens. They had tokens at Rocky's. It was great. Man, if you never got to go... Sorry, side, side note here. A little bit of a tangent. If you never went to the arcades back in the day, you really missed out. And to me... The greatest of all time was Rocky's Replay in Orlando, Florida. It was dingy. It was dirty. It was full of haze and smoke because you could smoke at the arcade machines. It was gross, in a, in, in a word. It was a disgusting place to play a video game, and there was no finer arcade ever made. There were constantly new games coming in. The games were well-maintained and taken care of. Everything that was there was an A+. They had a huge selection of racing games, huge selection of DDR machines, lots of pinball. It was just fantastic. And it was the home of the 25-cent mystery meat hot dog, which, to this day, I am fairly certain is why I had my gallbladder removed about 10 years ago. But back to Crazy Taxi. This is the Dreamcast version. Well, this is actually the Steam version, but this is the home version of the arcade release, Crazy Taxi. And if you have never played this one, it's wackadoo. It is so, so over the... And it's just, like, the most 1999 Sega game ever made. Like, even more so than Sonic Adventure or anything like that. This screams Sega. The physics are questionable, the speed is high, the music is great, the graphics are pretty good for the time period, and the gameplay is just ridiculous and exciting and so much fun. The gameplay is simple. You pick up a fare, you take them to their location as fast as you possibly can, you earn bonuses by jumping over people, by weaving in and out of traffic and near misses, and getting there as quick as possible. It's an absolutely brilliant game. Crazy Taxi is one of my favorite games ever. It's something... That's comfort food to me now. I go back to it regularly to just play it when I need to let go and play something nuts. Generation 7 is a game that I didn't know about until I think two or three months ago when I saw it on one of Metal Jesus' videos. This is a great interpretation of one of my favorite movies of all time. Well, no, not an interpretation. That's the wrong word. This is a decidedly modern take on a classic trope in cinema the cannonball run, the race from one side of the country to the other. This is Need for Speed, The Run. All right, here's one that I've discovered recently, and this is Need for Speed, The Run. And like I said in the intro here, yeah, thanks to Metal Jesus for introducing this one to me on a video a couple of months ago, because I didn't know this existed. I am just enamored with the movie, The Cannonball Run. I love movies with a ridiculous concept, and the idea of a race from one side of the country to the other 
as fast as you possibly can, and you toss Dom DeLuise and Burt Reynolds into it, chances are I'm going to be interested. And it's a movie that I just really love. And the fact that it took as long as it did for anyone to just kind of embrace that trope and make a video game out of it is kind of ridiculous. Now, there might have been big box PC version games of Cannonball Run. I don't know. But this one here takes advantage of what the Xbox 360 was able to do and makes something really special. The gameplay is fast and just is like signature need for speed. And it's a great controlling game. It's not a traditional racing game by any stretch of the imagination because there's missions and different aspects that you have to complete, whether it's just, you know, get from point A to point B as fast as you possibly can, or like in the intro, avoid the mafia and don't die. It's an over-the-top game that tries to ground itself in a little bit of reality, and I really appreciate that the Need for Speed devs took a chance on this one and really used their engine for something special. If you haven't played this one, is it the best one? Ugh, you know what? I, I, despite the fact that this is probably not the best one, it's the one that I have enjoyed the most playing it. It's the one I've gone back to the most frequently. Need for Speed The Run is a great game. I'm really loving this one. Generation 8 brings us to a remake, but it's one of the best remakes for one of the finest arcade racing games out there. One of the best experiences I've ever had playing a game. This is Burnout Paradise Remastered. Alright, Gen 8 is a remaster, and this might be cheating, but I don't, I don't care, it's my list. So we're going with Burnout Paradise Remastered. I loved the original Burnout Paradise. The remaster does something incredibly special here by taking that great gameplay and putting just the most delicious coat of paint on it and making it accessible for modern players. The game is stunning to behold. It's absolutely gorgeous to look at. The physics engine is one of the best in any racing game that I have ever played. It's like kind of the antithesis of Crazy Taxi when I'm stopping to think about it, which has a terrible physics engine, but it's still a fun game. Burnout Paradise Remastered, though, takes that physics engine and does so much by allowing you to do all these different types of gameplay elements. You can just cruise Paradise City if you want to. You can go into races. There's demolition mode. There are things that you have to find throughout the city by crashing through them, like the different gates or the Burnout Paradise uh, billboards. There are hunter missions where you have to track down a certain number of cars and wreck them in a certain number of time. It does so much with a basic concept of just crazy physics, and it works brilliantly well. This is a game that I have seen so many people play for the first time, not really understanding what they're getting themselves into, and it just clicks. Finally, Generation 9, I can't look past what is the big gun in arcade racing right now, and that is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I can't do a list of arcade racing games and not mention Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Like, I know for some people that are purists on racing games, they look at Mario Kart as kind of a toy, and uh, fine, I'm a toy collector, I don't give a damn. I love this game. It does so much, and it has become like the gift that keeps on gifting. Like, you guys know the meme with the lady screaming and pointing at the cat that's kind of grinning? That's Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That meme will not die, neither will Mario Kart 8. And I'm okay with both of them. Because the amount of stuff, the amount of content that we have gotten out of this game, that Nintendo has really gotten blood from a stone here. Like, it could have just been done. It could have just been the core tracks that originally appeared in Mario Kart 8. And that's all we got. But no, they've updated it. We're starting to get DLC courses. We're actually about halfway through the list of DLC courses now. We just found out that in the next wave of DLC, we're getting a new playable character in Birdo. It doesn't stop improving. The only thing that I could see Nintendo topping this with is just saying, no, we're not doing Mario Kart anymore. We're doing Nintendo Kart. We're doing all characters from all franchises in a kart racing game. Because that's really the only way I can see them topping it. I am constantly impressed by what they have done with this game. It looks incredible. It plays beautifully well. The music and the soundtrack is fantastic. The gameplay is just perfect. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the granddaddy of arcade racing games, especially on modern consoles. This is the ultimate game. If you haven't played it, you need to. 
All right, my friends, there you have it. My favorite arcade racing games from each console generation. Let me know in the comments down below which one are your favorites, because no one's going to be wrong on this one. Whatever your favorite is, that's great. I would love to hear about it. There's tons of games I'm sure I have overlooked in my history of playing games, and arcade racing games are some of my favorites. Special shout out to Metal Jesus for his videos on arcade racing games throughout the years. I really appreciate you doing those, Jason. Introduced me to a ton of incredible games that I have just fallen in love with over the years, so thank you for that. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, helps with the engagement. Subscribe if you want to stick around, because I'd love to have you here. And remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon.